Going back through my documentation here just to make sure I've got everything noted correctly and I didn't make any mistakes here on my uh, preliminary testing of the uh, transformer where we've got the open secondary side there. So uh, let me go ahead and get this uh, removed. We'll take it out and uh, just take a quick look at it and see if we can do anything to it or uh, look for a, a replacement transformer. Yeah, I took a moment here just to uh, reconfirm my uh, readings were accurate. So we're still open on this uh, one side of the uh, secondary. The way this screw head looks, I wonder if somebody's been inside this transformer uh, before. Still no change to this point. Let me uh, go ahead and get all my uh, connections here loose because I'm going to have to uh, push these leads back through. Alright, uh, I've got this uh, removed uh, far enough, I believe. And uh, what I was hoping to see on some transformers, you know, there's some solder two connections back here without the uh, windings themselves going uh, deeper into the uh, transformer here. But uh, let me get the uh, multimeter hooked back up here and let's just recheck these two points and see if we're still open. Okay, we're still open there. And moving these uh, leads around, I'm not uh, seeing any change at all here with the uh, DC resistance uh, readings here on the meter. Alright, you guys may or may not be able to see this. I was uh, just trying to cut back ever so slightly. Looks like we've got another winding here uh, that's on the outside of where I need to be uh, to investigate the uh, open secondary. So I may have already done some additional damage here to one of the other windings just by uh, cutting the uh, tape back or trying to remove it here. Need to uh, look through my uh, kind of my junk or surplus pile. I've got uh, I think five or six different transformers. Uh, the problem is I think they're just a little too large for uh, this radio as far as the physical size. Um, not the uh, milliamp readings, but uh, more to come on that. Let me uh, just play around with this a little bit more off camera. If I see anything, I'll come back and provide an update. All right, I'm not going to go any further uh, at this point on the transformer. Uh, one thing interesting I might do, if uh, time ever permits, I've always wanted to uh, wind a uh, transformer from scratch. So um, since I've got some great lamination um, iron pieces here, uh, maybe if time presents in the future, we'll uh, take this thing completely apart, see if we can create a, a new transformer. Let me go ahead and uh, size a, a new transformer for this, and uh, we'll look and see if I've got anything that's suitable for the radio. If not, I'll look to buy one uh, just second hand. Then uh, we'll go ahead and continue moving forward with the restoration while the uh, transformer itself uh, hunt continues. You guys just saw the uh, photos there. Uh, a couple boxes I was sorting through looking at some of the transformers I had on hand. Um, I think these are exactly alike. There's one that's a 3600 and a 3600A. Not really sure what the difference is, but uh, I think both of these have uh, center tapped secondary outputs, but they're um, actually, you know, grounded back to the uh, bell housing itself here. So um, I'm going to have to open that up and be able to separate that winding if uh, I'm able to use one of these. I'm going to do some uh, checks offline, just look at uh, DC resistance and uh, see if either one of these transformers are good. I don't recall. Not too bad. Okay, I think I'm in luck here. 
you guys can probably uh, see that lead here protruding through. I'll see if I can get that up, dress that up, and uh, reroute it up through here, then clean up the rest of these leads. All right, let's give it a, a quick check here. This is uh, now my uh, center tap location. It was going to uh, the uh, bell housing itself here, in between the laminates and the bell housing, so it was grounded. And uh, you can see I've separated that now. Three seventy nine and uh, three fifty one. So uh, we're in good shape. Okay, uh, you guys can see I've got this dressed up here. Looks a little better, a little neater. Let me get the uh, cover back on here. And uh, here I'm just doing some DC resistance checks from uh, each lead of the transformer back to the uh, bell housing itself. I had mentioned earlier about sizing a replacement transformer for my Airline 62306. Uh, let's walk through that. Uh, but real quick, I was able to measure the uh, AC output of that secondary winding that was good on the transformer. So I hooked it up and I read about 250 uh, volts there with 117 volts on the uh, line input side. And uh, you can see about 257.6 with 120 uh, volts applied. Now that transformer that uh, I was just uh, cleaning up to potentially use, I could still probably use that. The voltages are going to be higher as you could see. Um, and I think the radio would still work well. I may have to make some uh, tweaks along the way. But what I'm going to try to do is um, actually find a transformer that's a better match. So uh, let me just walk you through the math of how I size a replacement transformer. It's worked well for me in the past because I've replaced a, a number of them over the years. Uh, the first thing you'll look at, you can see here on the uh, left, column here I have the uh, tube complement called out in order and then we're looking at the heater or filament uh, volts and then looking at the tube manual itself you can see I've put the uh, amperage in for the uh, heaters or filaments down in this column and I've got that totaled up here for 2.2 amps of current for the uh, heater filament. And one thing important as well, it includes the two Type 47 uh, dial lamps as well, or pilot lamps. So that's what I would go back with. And that would uh, bring us up to uh, 0.3 amps as well for two of those. So the uh, transformer that I size you know, I need to definitely be on the amperage side, you know, north of uh, 2 amps. And my guess is the transformer that was in there was probably, you know, around 2 amps. That was common, not 2.1 or 2.2. So if, if I can get, you know, at 2 amps, we'll be running the uh, transformer probably at max load on the uh, heater filament side for the 6.3 volt winding. Now when you go down to the rectifier tube, the 5Y3G, it operates at 5 volts here and it operates at 2 amps. So the 5 volt winding, and that's what you would see on most transformers, is going to be rated at 2 amps or more. So I just need to be mindful of that as well. Now, here's where you have some, um, you know, subjective numbers come into play. You can see I have my B plus requirements, and I have my plate and my screen grid 
uh, current laid out here. So looking at uh, various tube manuals, um, I went in to pull the uh, milliamps for the plate and the screen grid based off the voltages you see in this column. Now you may ask, where did I get the voltages from? Because the uh, radio that I'm working on in the schematic, I think there were only two locations that were called out that indicated the uh, B plus voltage. And uh, I was able to find another schematic that was very, very similar to the uh, 306, and that's the 62386. And there's a lot more detail in there. So I think these voltages will probably be, you know, plus or minus uh, 10 to 20 percent of what hopefully I can end up with once we uh, find a uh, correct, you know, power transformer uh, for the uh, 306. Anyway, going back to this exercise, you can see it's an approximate 2.3 amps or milliamps, I should say, for the 6A8 tube, and I've got each of these indicated below. Um, the 6F6 is uh, operating in the triode mode, so the uh, current is uh, much less at around 15, and you can see the uh, 6G5 tube is included as well. Now, one thing that you don't see uh, for folks that are new in the hobby, the 5Y3G is not called out here in this side, and it should not be called out on this side. The uh, current itself actually just flows through the tube, so you would not include the 5Y3 uh, current into your, you know, readings here. And you can see the same exercise here for the screen grid, um, trying to uh, match things up. And if you look at my uh, picture in picture here, um, you can see uh, the uh, 6F6 where I tried to go in and, you know, based off of the uh, negative 11 volts control grid voltage, it's called out on the schematic, uh, what the uh, current flow would be. So that's some of the charts uh, that's available for a lot of the uh, tubes. However, uh, some tube data, you know, you won't see that uh, granular data. You'll see it called out at 100 volts or 250, and you kind of kind of have to guess in between. Now, if I increase the voltage and run this, let's say it's at 300 plus volts on each plate, there would be more current consumption um, here on the radio, so the transformer would have to be sized higher. So I just want to keep that in mind. I think that's how they got by with the uh, smaller transformer. You can see there's a reduced B plus voltage of around 155, and the schematic for my radio showed 150. So that's a low B plus compared to what you would see on most radios. And again, that directly ties back into the uh, uh, the current as well. So. If you add all this up, you can see we're probably somewhere around 34 milliamps. Um, I'm hoping I'm within, you know, 10 to 15 percent of that number. Maybe we'll do some measurements if I can find an exact uh, replacement transformer. And I always place an overhead on the transformer, and I like to go 150 percent when I can, um, if you know the transformer will fit. Uh, the form factor. That's a problem many times. But um, somewhere around 120% overhead would be great. So somewhere around 40 milliamps on that B plus high voltage side and uh, somewhere around 240 to 250 volts um, on each plate. So, you know, I'd be looking at a 500 volt uh, total uh, voltage there. So anyway, I wanted to go through the math. Uh, this will be my next exercise, uh, you know, to uh, grab the uh, transformer. I've already got a couple leads, and I've got some friends that have sent me some links as well uh, that I'll definitely check out. But I uh, thought this was worth uh, sharing for uh, folks that may run into a similar issue like this. Let me grab the chassis real quick. I want to uh, pull it up here. Uh, I've had an opportunity to do uh, about two or three hours worth of uh, watching some uh, rust melt away. And uh, let me show you what it looks like real quick, and uh, we'll conclude the video.
Yeah, one of my viewers said this thing needs a shampoo, and I agree. It's a uh, nasty little critter, and, uh, you know, all the uh, metal over here on the tuning condenser itself is really, really bad shape. So I've still got a lot of work ahead, but, uh, you know, just for a few hours and doing the rust removal, I'm getting there um, ever so slowly. You can see this side here in contrast to the uncleaned side. And um, I've still got some areas with some slight pitting, but uh, most of this was really just crud and surface rust. So um, I'm fortunate. Uh, there was a big area right here that was uh, deeper rust, and I've got some pitting in this area. I'm going to still try to uh, do a little work there. No big deal if I can't get that out, and some here on the side as well. And I haven't touched the front, uh, this side plate, or the rear. And... Uh, what I'm going to do next is uh, start removing all the components here. So I'll take this capacitor out. Uh, we'll probably pull this uh, lead as well out here for the grid lead. Um, probably go ahead and uh, take out my green eye tube adapter as well, or I might be able to work around the grommet. We'll see. Uh, get the IF filters out, the antenna coil over here. Get that removed. Get the tuning condenser off the radio as well. And uh, that will help facilitate uh, moving, you know, further along in the uh, rust removal when the uh, time permits. So, you know, I'll have some time in just getting, you know, these parts out of my way. And uh, maybe I can uh, at least get to this point, maybe as soon as tomorrow, and uh, do a little bit more uh, rust removal here on this thing. But I uh, thought I'd share that with you guys uh, real quick. I appreciate you watching. Until the next video, take care.